Most of your career, you've been skating down massive drops. How are your knees and ankles? Excellent. Have you? <laughs> How did you first get into skating? The show Rocket Power. <laughs> no way, dude. If you actually really want to just drink and get drunk, you just can get do drunk that at home. Way cheaper, just <laughs> buy a bottle and go home. G'day, welcome to Skate Mates. I'm here with my mate Jeff DeCesare. I'm pronouncing that correctly, right? Yeah, perfect. AKA Jeff Wong Song. And we're here today to talk about skateboarding. So as usual, I got a list of like 10 questions here. I was looking at your YouTube channel and it appeared to be that you are from New Jersey. I am, yeah. Whereabouts in New Jersey? Uh, this town called Denville. Really small town. Like people even from New Jersey don't even, <laughs> sometimes don't even know what I'm talking about. It's like 45 minutes from New York City. Oh, so. so you could like take a day trip out to go skate if you really wanted to. Yeah, it's easy. It's like, it takes like an hour to get there or something. Okay, because I did or, look at the map yeah. and I wondered how far that distance was. So about an hour isn't too bad. Yeah, 45 minutes, an hour. And yeah, definitely not bad. But when I was younger, I would like take a train to the city from okay. where I live. And that was a little bit, a little bit easier to manage because just traffic. Yeah, I mean, we're in LA right now and traffic's pretty bad here. It's yeah. like 10 times worse in New York City. So it's worse in New York. It's okay. just so like compact and just so many a lot of people. So many people in such a small space. Denville. So it's would you say it's kind of rural or just kind of like suburbs? It's a suburban okay. town. Yeah, definitely it's definitely a good place to raise kids. Oh, it's kind of a little more I'm, kind I'm, of chilled out. Yeah, I'm I'm glad I grew up there. It's, definitely a nice town yeah that's like a similar thing to what i say like i'm glad i grew up in australia because if i grew up in like los angeles as a teenager i would have just been a different person dude right so i'm yeah. glad i had that kind of upbringing how did you first get into skating it was a couple things well the main one is i um my cousins they were all like i had a cousin that was like a year younger than me one that was a year older than me so right. all similar in age and kind of just did everything that the other one did so yeah. I, I i think they skated or had boards before me so i was like oh okay try to do that but it was also like that and a mix of like the show rocket power <laughs> no way dude yeah <laughs> i know i because when that show came out you know i was i was like the same age as the kids on the show yeah so i was like oh if they can do every sport that good i could definitely do at least one sport like for sure that. and i was like damn all these are hard <laughs> dude <laughs> to get this good at all these things and i'm like oh it's a cartoon yeah okay. it's funny uh, you say that because when i seen rocket power i like got into like rollerblading like aggressive inline skating yeah yeah i think i think i i i, I bmx before skated okay so i think i i definitely like tried you all, all the extreme sports out and skating's just the one that made the most sense yeah. for me. And also the Tony Hawk games. Yeah, like, that that was mean, a big one for me too. All kind of typical answers, but I, I feel like <laughs> everyone from our era, like that was the influence. Yeah, like, that was the exposure we had to skating. I had a similar thing, like I rode BMX for a while, but when you're a little kid, the BMX bike is so heavy and like kind of awkward and like bikes mm -hmm. cost a lot more money than like a deck, you know? So that's yeah, what kind of led me to skating. You don't go through a bike a month or yeah, whatever. <laughs> true that, yeah. You kind of did a lot of skateboarding alone? Yeah, well, when I first, like I said, when I first started, I would skate with my cousins yeah. all the time. And then it graduated to like, I met some kids in my neighborhood who were a little bit older than me and I would skate with them. But right. that was intimidating because they were all, to me, they all seemed pro when I was younger. So yeah. I was like kind of scared to skate with them at first. But I feel then, that. But then I got comfortable and we all became good friends. And then there was like a weird period. Cause like I said, I was always kind of like the younger kid in my group skating. And yeah. like, I was, I was like, oh, cute little kid trying to skate yeah but then i noticed like once i started learning tricks and actually kind of got better there was like some tiny kind of like shift people the, were envious in the attitude towards how those friends treated me yeah right so when that happened i kind of just that's when i started skating by myself because i'm yeah. like all right well if these guys are going to be jerks to me i'm just going to go do my own thing and then uh i think like a year or two later then they all like started being nice again <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's it was, weird how that kind of happens huh yeah so there was like a there was a short stint of me just skating yeah by myself even uh when i did have friends and stuff to skate with a lot of them didn't want to skate as much as i would so yeah typically after school i would just like be at home and skate my flat bar by myself or yeah. like have my parents drive me to a spot and i would just set up a camera and okay film myself because yeah. other people didn't want to go because i noticed and i looked through i lurked your channel looked at all your old videos it's always just you skating by yourself in the clip 
Um, well, most yeah, of the time, when, anyway. Yeah, a lot of the time in my like high school years. Yeah. How did you like find the motivation to be like, I'm gonna go skate today completely alone and it's cold outside, there's snow on the ground and I'm gonna skate this six foot, seven foot loading dock? <laughs> um, it, was, it was a couple things. Number one, I mean my whole life skating has like, even to this day, it's like, it's the thing that like, it gives such a joy to like land something new yeah. and something you pushed yourself to do. And I was just got addicted to that feeling at a really, it's a good Young feeling age and i know that's like a cliche thing to say but it's the truth it's like i just i love that feeling so much of just learning something new or doing yeah. something that i had to push myself for so every day i wanted to do that i'm like i'm like a really ocd and routine oriented person so okay. there was like some moment in time in high school i wanted to get better at skating and i'm like all right how am i going to get better at skating i need to set goals every yes. day because before that i kind of just skated aimlessly like i would just go out and skate and I feel like I've done that my whole life up until like five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. So I would skate aimlessly before that. I would learn tricks, but it would like be random. Mm. So then like eventually, one day I just like, I like, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try to learn or do something new every day. That was my motivation. I wanted to keep that going as long as I could. That was really the motivation, I guess. Dude, that's wild because I feel like when like when I was that young I didn't like I was just skating aimlessly and it was just like whatever I had my bag of tricks was comfy didn't really care to learn more but you were like already like I want to get better at this one thing at that age yeah and it, it was like like I didn't have a like I didn't drive when I was younger so I was kind of like had to skate everywhere had to well not even that because I was pretty far from spots it yeah. would be like a couple miles I would have to oh, skate shit. so like and none of the spots were really worth it. So I would just, I had a flat bar and that was it. So like- what driveway am driveway skating. Yeah, I'm like, it was basically like learn a new flat bar trick every day or a flat ground trick every day. And I don't know, I liked it. It was a challenge. Yeah. It was like, how like, how tech can I get on this rail without like, until I run out of sh stuff. Yeah, I, you maxed it out basically. Yeah, it was fun to have a challenge like that every day. That's sick, man. That, that drive from like being that young is admirable, dude. Because like I said, when generally teenagers are that young, they're just like a thousand different things going on. They're always wanting to be everywhere with their friends, but you were just kind of like, I just want to concentrate on this one thing and just like max it out basically. Yeah, and I, I'm happy that I had that outlet of skating because, you know, in my town, it's like small town, not a whole lot of stuff to do. And I feel, yeah. like, feel like other people, like if they didn't have, like most people didn't have that in my school. They didn't have like didn't something have... they were passionate about. They were just like, either they did like- Football or some shit. Sport, school sanctioned sports that yeah. were like pretty much, you know, they did them just cause their parents wanted them to get a, like a scholarship or something. And yeah. in their free time, they would like party and mm. all that. And I yeah, Little stuff did not care about us to this day i still i don't like really going out to bars or anything like yeah. i don't see a point so yeah there is none but yeah. bars are just like feel like it's just kind of like white noise it's like whatever yeah it's like feel like if you're a guy you go there to meet girls Pick up chicks yeah but like i have a girlfriend so there's yeah no, there's no point <laughs> and uh if you want to if you actually really want to just drink and get drunk you just can get do drunk that at home way cheaper just <laughs> buy a bottle and go home yeah hopefully with somebody not by yourself so denville it's kind of like a it sounds like kind of like small town usa yes <laughs> that it makes is. me feel like because i'd always bitch and moan about being from sydney skateboarding and it makes me feel uh, kind of entitled now hearing other um, people's stories like back east i'm like damn i actually had a pretty decent skateboarding growing up in sydney compared to like you know if i lived more rural areas or like a place like you know denville yeah, I mean, there's definitely um, positives and negatives in every town. Yeah. You know, I'm sure coming from Sydney, a big town, or a big city, I mean, you have tons of spots. A yeah, lot, tons a lot of, of spots, other spots. skaters to skate with and yeah. all that. But Was I'm there a, a park in Danville? No. No park Is in there Danville. one now? No. To, still to this day? Yeah, I know. That sounds mind-blowing dude. because we're in California and there's <laughs> a park on every street out here. But um, yeah, dude, not even, I don't even... Where do they spend their money? The I don't city? even think there's a park in the county I grew up. <laughs> there was though, for for a while, there was a park in another town that was like maybe 15 minutes from where I lived. Okay. And, um, but it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't very good. It was crazy. The park was not good at all, but like they had a crazy good mini ramp. Right. Which that was the only thing people went there to go skate. Like nothing else at the park, just the mini ramp. And then they, re that was there 
since 2003. Oh, it's and they, like they recently tore dude, it out. It was messed up. Like one day, because like I mean I don't live there anymore. My friends just told me, like one day they just my friend showed up at the park and it was gone. Like no warning, <laughs> no warning, no nothing. warning, no nothing. Just a vacant lot, and they took dude, everything out. What did they replace it with? Nothing. Is nothing. Dude, here's the fucked up part. So that park was at like a, you know, a park park. Like it had a- Oh, like, like a recreational had park. Like, tennis, like, like this, I had tennis yeah. courts, basketball courts, playgrounds, whatever. Everything there was lit up at night except the skate park. Like the one- That makes me sick. The one part of the park that was had no lights was the skate park. And it's just like, dude, it's probably the smallest part of the park too. Yeah. Like really? That's like, Dude, sometimes city councils just are so out of touch. So they just don't care. They're like, oh, it's just a skate park. <laughs> Who's going to use it? You know what I mean? It's like, oh. hey, There's probably more people at that park than anywhere, there, oh, anywhere totally. else in the park, too. Yeah, yeah, that was the closest park, but I, we did have... There were other parks you had to drive to, though, that I went to in the wintertime, like, every weekend. Indoor parks, or...? Indoor parks. Okay. Indoor parks were like a big thing on the East Coast just because yeah. it sucks to skate in the wintertime on yeah. the East Coast. So there was this one park called uh, Hackettstown. That was just the town it was in. Everyone just called it that. And that was like, yeah. dude, to this day, that was probably my favorite park I've ever skated. Okay. And I'm not just saying that because of like, just I was, you know, you I grew, grew up, up there. Kind that. Of... that was a really good park. And wow. I wish it was still there. They, but... it, I, f I feel like that's a common theme among indoor skate parks. So this is the next question, right? A bird almost, I'm pretty sure it was a bird shit. Almost shit on my Isn't camera. good luck when they... But that's what they say, but I feel like people say that to make you feel better. They're like, go oh, buy yeah. a lottery ticket, a bird shit on you today. Something good is gonna happen to you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> How did you learn trick skating alone? Like, did you reference videos, magazines? I mean, you had no one mm. to kind of ask questions and stuff. Like, how did you figure tricks out? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I mean, definitely like the basics were kind of just trial and error. Okay. So like, dude, to this day, I think learning how to kickflip was probably the hardest thing I ever learned. Kickies are hard. On like, like seriously, I think that was the hardest thing I ever learned on a skateboard. Because right. it took me well over a year to learn those. Yeah. And I don't think, after that, after I learned how to kickflip, everything else just came like, like. It's like a steep learning curve, huh? And mm -hmm. then it kind of, things start so to happen. strange. But yeah, once I learned how to kickflip, everything else kind of made sense. I could kind of figure everything else mm. out in a way. The basics, like I said, I would just trial and error, like yeah. just see what worked. And then, um, yeah, as far as like weirder tricks that I do, I was just out of boredom. Right. Like I, I only had so many spots in the town I grew up. And like, once I learned all the basic stuff on that, I'm like, all right, well, I want to progress and get better. Like, how can I do this? And I'm like, I'll add a flip, I'll add a spin. So that's kind of how that stuff Dude, came Dude, that's about. crazy. Like, I mean, this leads me into the next question, like trick selection. Like, obviously, how I think about skateboarding is like, I learned like the foundation stuff, like kick flip, heel flip, nollie flip, nollie heel flip, front shove it, back shove it, 180, whatever. That's like my fun go-to kind of thing. But like, I'm assuming that you had all of those and you're like, you know what? I want to try all this extra hard stuff that no one really does just because I'm bored. Like, <laughs> uh, basically, yeah. Like, specific tricks had a different motivation for sure. But okay. at the end of the day, it was like boredom. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I remember, like, uh, for example, uh, the 360 inward heel. So, my stepdad, so my parents are divorced. My mom started dating my stepdad when I was in high school. Yeah. Um, so during the summertime, she would like, my mom would go to where he lived in Pennsylvania. That, okay, so I say I'm from a small town in New Jersey. Uh -huh. My stepdad, still to this day, because they, they just live there permanently now. Oh, wow. They live in this literally middle of the woods, nowhere in Dude. Pennsylvania. And I, I didn't have a car or anything back then. Kind of oh. obligated to go with my mom to when yeah. she would go there in the summertime. And I was bored out of my mind. What did you have to skate? Like that's a driveway? Getting, that's where I'm getting at. No, not even. His driveway was a hill, like a oh, no like, flat. Yeah, no, it's just straight like just that. Just a straight hill. Yeah. And the only thing to skate there, he had a, he had a, uh, like a porch, like a deck out front. Okay and there was a two-stair going uh. into the hill of a driveway. <laughs> so it was a hill bomb after the two-stair. No, it wasn't a hill bomb, it was like, okay, so the driveway was like that, and yep. then the two-stair was like here at the bottom. Ah, uh, I get you. So it was like a slight slant I yeah. would do the tricks into. And that was literally the only thing I had to skate there. So, you know, of course, I just did all the basic tricks I knew how to do off that, I got bored. Yep. 
And yeah. I'm like, one day I'm like, well, I can tray flip, I can inward heel. What if I combine them together? That seems like that would work. And I mean, hour, eight hours later, maybe not that long, but like, yeah, at some point, yeah, it worked out. I landed. Yeah, you figured it out. Yeah, it's just, again, trial and error, just Damn, seeing dude. what works. Earlier today, I was watching the game of skate that you played against, um, what's his face, Jamie Griffin, yeah. a couple of years ago, the ES game of skate. Uh -huh. And then the trick that shut it down was the nollie laser flip. I think so, yeah. Was that it? Uh, I swear it was honest, like nolly laser. I, to be honest, I don't even remember what tricks <laughs> I did in that game, because that was just such a, such a what-the-hell moment. <laughs> I just kind of blacked out. But yeah. Yeah, I think it was a nolly laser flip, yeah. Was how, when, <laughs> I'm trying to comprehend. Was that something you had learned, like, as a teenager? Like, I'm going to learn a nolly laser. Is that, like, one that you learned, like, later on? And you why? Know, I learned that how? pretty, I think I learned those before normal laser flips, actually. Really? Yeah, just because I've been able to nolly big heel for, like, a long, long time. And okay. I'm, but, like, I remember big spin heel flips. That was, a, I could not I don't think I've ever landed that on flat ground, but I could like, I'd have to do it off a drop or something. Just because right. it's like, I don't know, you need more time to do it or something. Um, so yeah, I could nollie big heel pretty good. And I'm like, oh, well, nollie laser is like the same thing. You just don't turn. And yeah, I don't know. I've had that trick for a while. I think I, that was one. I remember before YouTube, I saw some random montage I downloaded off like LimeWire or something. <laughs> Shouts out and, to Lime Wild. Yeah, this is before YouTube, kids. <laughs> uh, download some montage. I saw some guy do that in a line. And I'm yeah. like, whoa, I never thought of that. A nolly laser flip. I wonder if that would work better. Jeez. And I think it, that's why that's why I learned that one. Okay. And it just seems to work. But I can kind of see it kind of because you're rolling forward and you, the board wants to go that way. The kind momentum of. just works. Yeah. And you, you popped it on flat too. Like, I'm assuming all the crazy tricks you had to learn on flat when you were younger. No. Oh, like, it was more of like a drop, like you dude, found a yeah, spot. Yeah, a lot of the tricks I do off stairs, I've never even done on flat ground. Damn. Like uh, the trip, I've never done a triple flip on flat. Ne I don't, I've never even done a laser flip on flat. Really? Mm -hmm. Just straight to drops and stairs? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out where the comfort is there. Cause like when you're skating flat ground, it's relatively low impact, low danger. You can just kind of flip your tricks and then just, you know, figure it out. But you're literally jumping down like, seven eight nine ten stairs or like loading docks to just figure it out uh yeah more <laughs> or less yeah and here's the weird part dude the tricks that i'm good at on flat ground i'm terrible at off stairs really like i love doing switch heel flips and uh -huh. heel flips on flat ground and in games escape but i can't do them off stairs for shit like i can switch heel maybe like a three or a four and that's about yeah. it <laughs> like i'm not taking that down a ten stair jeez dude so it's it's strange i don't know my brain works weird <laughs> That's kind of, yeah, I mean, I feel like skateboarding is a very mental thing. And, like, as much as it is, like, physical because you're physically having to, like, make your body do all these movements and the timing has to be perfect and everything else, but, like, you have to kind of think about it in a way, too. So maybe you're just, like, wired to think about skateboarding differently. Yeah, and I, I have, like, little hacks to things. Like, for example, like, the tray double flip. That trick to me, I don't even think of it as a tray flip. It's like a varial flip to me. And it just keeps going. It's like, it's literally a varial flip times two. Right. Like you flick it like a varial flip and I'm not even good. I can't even 360 flip down stuff that good. That's why I do that one because <laughs> it's easier for you. I'm better at varial flips and Dude. I just, yeah. So that, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I guess, I mean, skateboarding is all about trying things because what I found when I moved out here, skating with everybody, you kind of get better just with skating with people. But a lot of skateboarding, the tricks are kind of similar in a way, like you were saying with the varial flip. Mm -hmm. Like everything is set up the same kind of way, but you have to do something kind of different to make it like a different trick. So I yeah. feel like learning new tricks is kind of uh, relative to my bag at least. But you're saying that you reckon that trick is easier than just a tray. Um, For you. Off, off of stairs, yeah, I don't know. Tray flips, whenever I, I used to have them, but then once I learned the double, I lost them down stuff and now i just get hurt when i try them damn dude <laughs> that's not a bad trade-off dude double tray and, yeah know. i don't mind Every, everyone does tray flips like i'm not gonna bring anything to the table with mine yeah <laughs> most of your career you've been skating down massive drops and stuff like how are your knees and ankles excellent have you <laughs> have you had any like injuries per se i yeah. mean everybody's had their injuries but like have there been any major injuries from like jumping off like incredibly big shit? yeah probably not as bad as you would expect 
Like, I've definitely, I've rolled my ankle a bunch of times. In okay. fact, I actually rolled my ankle a week ago. But oh, shit. It's like, I've rolled it so many times, it's like, it just heals up so quick. Yeah, um, you're conditioned. Yeah, yeah I've, I guess technically the most serious injury I've had is I broke the fifth metatarsal in my foot. Okay. And that, the barracks did like a whole thing on it, because I did it at the barracks. Oh, shit. Um, I was just like skating down the 10, and I bailed a trick, and my foot like literally landed like sideways when oh. I landed. So like you can only imagine. Yeah, how long were you out for after that? Um, I couldn't skate for three months. I was like on crutches for two months and then okay. boot for a month. And then uh, I stepped on a board for the first time in three months. And then it took me like three months to get all my tricks and stuff back. That's pretty quick, dude. So yeah, like half a year of recovery, I'd say. Um, yeah. That was, for ankles, that was probably the worst. Ankles I mean, suck, dude. I mean, that was my foot, but I guess you could count that as your ankle. Yeah, for sure. Um, the knees, knees and ankles are like apples and oranges when you're like talking about injuries, because yeah. ankles, I'm never like that worried when an ankle injury happens, because I can kind of like feel what's wrong and yeah. detect what part of my ankles messed up, but knees is like, it's scary, dude. Even to this day, like something, you could like tweak something in your knee and it's just like super unexpected because it's like, you just, I don't know, you could step the wrong way. Step on it wrong and it bent, yeah. Yeah, which has definitely happened to me before. I guess somewhere along, yeah, I I tore my meniscus. Oh shit. Which, that's a common one for skaters. Yeah, for sure. That was annoying to deal with, and I think I got back to skating way quicker than I should have. You just let it kind of do its thing? Did you have to have surgery? No, no surgery. Um, I actually had a, I, I had an MRI a few years ago because my knee was really bothering me, and yeah. Um, I guess I partially tore my ACL at one oh point. Oh my too. god, that's a big one, dude. That's like the biggest one. Yeah, but like, I never even knew. <laughs> How do you not know when you tear your ACL? I don't know. Was it sore? I mean, I get there was like one specific injury I could I thought back to. Yeah. That I'm like, oh shit, maybe it happened when that happened. Yeah. But like, I mean, you didn't notice it right I away. I was skating and walking after that, but it just kind of hurt. So I don't shit. know. Yeah. But I mean, for the most part, my knees are good. Shit, man. I wish I could say the same. My knees are shot. We had a bit of a location change because. These people playing tennis are playing some music. How dare they play music in a public park like this? How rude. <laughs> um, Our park. Yeah, right, dude? So the next question is probably a question you've been asked many times. And we were talking about it earlier. Mm -hmm. And it's, I feel like, you know, part of it is human nature. But hate. Dealing with haters. I feel like when people, like... Remember those, I don't know if they were DGK shirts back in the day and it was like, yeah. fuck the haters or some shit. What was or it? Like, I, lo I, love, I love haters. I love haters. Like, I feel like there's people out there with, like actual haters and then there's people that like pretend like you know oh, that yeah. i have haters and i you know love haters and stuff but <laughs> i feel like sometimes the loudest person in the room is like the most like kind of insecure in a way yeah. whereas like obviously if you know jeff you know about the controversy and everything and he gets a little bit of hate and it just, to me, it seems like you don't really care, dude. It just seems like it's like water off a duck and you're just like, oh, yeah, whatever. Well, I'll tell you a little secret. I'm one of those people that, I wouldn't say I love haters, but it's definitely motivating. And I know that sounds another, like, cliche thing. Like, oh, I'm motivated <laughs> by the haters. But, like, if you get that hate, like, I mean, everyone's different. But yeah. to me, that's always been, like, a drive. Like, my theory is if everyone loved me, I'd have nothing to prove. It's right. like, okay, everyone likes me. Like, I don't even have to be good at skating. Yeah. So it's like, everyone is like, not everyone, but like people are hating on me for whatever reason. It's like, all right, well, how, how can I shut these people up? Like, what, yeah. can I, what can I do that's undeniably like, all right, that guy's a skater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it gets annoying. Don't get me wrong. Oh, like, yeah, because it's just the same shit over and over again. And it's like, dude, how many times do I have to like you know tell someone something but like i'd say overall it's it's like benefited me in a way really yeah i think so as in like just like a push like to prove them kind of wrong in a way yeah i i would think so that's that's the way i see it maybe it's like a east coast thing because i've noticed with like my friends from the east coast they're more kind of grounded in a way and they're not so much like I'm sorry to say, like, West Coast, but, like, <laughs> people out here are more worried about, like, if other people like them and, oh, you know, being yeah, liked dude. by everybody and 
wanting to be around the right people and stuff. It's crazy, man. I, I don't, I'm not gonna drop any names, but I've had like known pro skaters to so like, dude, how do you, how do you just not care about what people think? I'm like, I'm not a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, dude, who cares? Like, if, if you like what you do, if you if you think what you're doing is cool, who gives a shit? Like, yeah. As long as you're not hurting anyone or, like, doing anything actually bad, like, just do what you like to do and your life will be way more fun. Yeah, living your own life on your own accord, not having to live via other people and the uh, recognition of others, I guess. Exactly. I struggle with that a little bit because I'm, like, naturally I'm a little bit of a people pleaser, so I have to try to remind myself, like, just... Be yourself first and, you know... The and, oh, yeah, sorry to cut you off. You're right. Like, the people that are meant to be around you will be around you kind of thing. That's what I was going to say. It's like, if you just, like, fake who you are, like, you're going to be friends with these people that don't even like you for who you are. So what's yeah. the point? You might as well be yourself, do what you like to do, and see what who that attracts, and then that's, you know, be the... That's what you want. Yeah. Moving to California. When did you do it? How did you do it, and ultimately why? Um, I kind of know why skateboarding, yeah. but well, it was um, like the end of 2013. Okay. Uh, I had a friend living out here from. He's actually from the East Coast as well. He's a filmer. He was living out here. He was roommates with actually one of my good friends now, uh, Lamont Holt. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So they were roommates, and they needed another roommate. Yeah. And I had just like finished college at that point so they were like hey dude like we need a roommate you should you should come out if you want to move to california you should come out and and live with us i'm like hell yeah like when am i going to get this opportunity again so was there any like reservations were you kind of like oh yeah but like were you comfy in like new jersey or you were like no, ready I to wanted leave to move okay. like i knew like i i knew i'd didn't want to be in New Jersey permanently. Yeah. So, and I had always wanted to live in California. So I'm like, all right, well, if any time is the right time to try this, it's it's now. Now. So I just took that the was risk a ticket. And there are definitely some bumps in the road, but I'd say it, it it worked out in the end. Yeah. I had a similar kind of situation. Like I was, but I was more like I was super comfy back home in Sydney. I mm -hmm. was like, I'm comfy here. Like I don't want to leave. But then again, I was like, I need to get out of my comfort zone and push myself a little bit. And I'd been like traveling back and forth from the states. And I was like, COVID happened. And I was like, you know what? Now is the time to do this. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to do it right now. And that was the push that I needed to just get out. Oh. Did you drive across country? What did you do? Yeah, I, I did. Initially, I I flew out here. It was like October. 2013 I was like all right I'm gonna stay out there for like a month yeah see how it is see if I think I can survive out there yeah and then depending on that I'm gonna go back for like another month and then drive back out here with all my stuff seemed to work out like a lot of good stuff had happened within that month that I was tried it out here like I made a lot of connections a lot of made a lot of moves so I'm like man it just I, happened like that. I'm like, man, I think I think I need to do this. Like, yeah. I'm getting more exposure and meeting more people than I ever have, like, living anywhere else. And my parents, they've always been super supportive, and they understood that, and they're like, yeah, you should, you should, do, you should it. do this while you're young. That's so, dope, man. Um, yeah, shout out to them for always supporting. It's good to have, dude, A lot of, not a lot of people get supportive parents. Some, peop some people's parents are like, no, nah, this is how I grew up. I did this, I so you're yeah. going to do this too. So it's chill that your parents are like, like go for it, dude. dude you know? super grateful for them because I've had plenty of friends who have parents who just hate skating. Like, dude, it's funny. I had this best friend in elementary school, and uh, his dad was a cop. And the kids skated too, but um, his dad was super strict. And uh. he would like catch me skating with my friends in downtown and like kick us out of spots sometimes and then yeah. it got to a point like me and this kid were like close like really good best friends. friends and then his dad was like hey i don't want you hanging out with that that jeff that jeff kid, kid is anyway. a bad influence yeah but then i mean we stayed friends either okay. way and then ironically like i don't even know maybe like 15 years later then when i had a pro model board came out i hadn't talked to this kid in so long and then he just like, he tagged me on Facebook. He's like, Jeff DeCesare, I got your board. And I'm like, damn, that's like so cool. Like, 
And it was like, him. Yeah, my friend like still supported me after wow. all these years. I'm like, I wonder what his dad's saying right yeah, now. Yeah, his dad's probably like, like, damn, I guess that skating thing worked out. Yeah, for yeah. It's it's <laughs> crazy when life comes around full circle like that, dude. That's awesome to hear, though. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This is a good question because recently you've posted your first vlog on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. When did you decide to make the shift? Because I was going through your old videos and you had some vlogs in there from like, a while back, dude. Those, those were joke vlogs, so those but like, weren't serious. That was still like a, a kind of beginning, dude. Um, yeah, I get. Well, those vlogs were, they were not serious. There was a point when I was roommates with like every one of my roommates was a YouTuber. Right. And I was, at that time, I was like, my mindset was like, YouTube's kind of funny. So yeah, like, it's still kind of that gray area. It was like, I was kind of like poking fun at them. I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> these guys do vlogs. I bet my vlogs can be sicker and I won't, yeah. I won't even put effort into them so yeah I put a few of those out in like yeah. 2017 or something and then uh recently like I said my friend Lamont Holt the guy I was roommates with when I first moved out here so yeah. good friends with him recently we had been like skating and just I, he has a big YouTube yeah. page and I had been helping him with some content for his page and uh he was just breaking it down to me, like, dude, like, you could kill it at YouTube For and sure. like, make some good money from this. Yeah. And I'm like, my whole thing was I hate filming and editing, and I was like, it is I, time consuming. I, yeah, I mean, it is a job. I'm like, I never wanted to be I, the guy, the camera, like, filming myself, being like, what's up? Oh, like, to break that third wall, dude, it's it's I, tricky. Like, I mean, I get it. Like, you have to do it, but like, I just. I tr I, I've tried doing that and I just, I can't get into it. And yeah, I'm like, that's fair. So he was like, dude, I will help you do this because I'm, I'm so sure you could be successful at this. I want to show you. And he's like, I will film and edit your stuff and then we'll just like split yeah, the figure money. figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So that's I'm awesome, like, man. I'm like, all right, if you're that willing to help me out, then yeah, let's let's try this. Because I skate every day anyway, so. Yeah, you might as well like film it and then like, you know. Yeah, so um, we put that first one out, and it seems to be doing pretty well. People seem pretty stoked. Yeah, I think it's right, dude, because like you were saying, like you go skating every day, and you're like doing all these crazy tricks, and it's like cool to document like the behind the scenes. People are interested in that kind of thing, you know? Totally, yeah. It's I, I've noticed that like a lot of the time, people don't even care about the skating. They just want to hear like the stories, the dialogue, and, the, and stuff, the B sides and stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's like interesting to watch your integrity towards skating and like doing your own thing i feel like that's such a rare thing this day and age is to like just be like i'm just gonna go skate do my own thing not worry about what other people say and not conform to like the social norms of like what's cool and what isn't do you have any words of advice for like kids that like are wanting to go and skate but they kind of feel like they're I mean, we're all kind of misfits in a way in skateboarding, but like the kids that just come into skating and they don't know where they where they kind of stand kind of thing. I'll say one thing. Essentially, everything's a trend, right? Yeah. So whatever you think is cool right now is not going to be cool one day. So you might as well do what you actually think is cool. Yeah. I really haven't switched up my gear or tricks the whole time I've been skating because that's what I think is cool. Yeah. I think it's kind of a blessing. Like It's like tricks and stuff that kind of stand out. Like yeah, maybe, for sure, dude. Maybe, whether it's good or bad, um, <laughs> it stands out. It gets people's attention, whereas... Yeah. It's like, a th I've thought about this, too. We are talking about growing up in L.A. I feel like if I grew up in L.A., I would just, like... I'd probably just, like, copy everyone mm. else and be like, oh, this per this kid's doing this trick. It's That's probably what's cool. That's probably what's cool right and now. Then, but, like, like I said, growing up, skating by myself... I don't know what the hell was cool. I was yeah, just like well, figuring it out. I think this is I think this is cool, so I'm gonna learn it. And then I had no one to be like, dude, that's whack, don't do that. Like and if I so if I was out here, I'd probably have a lot of that, like random people at the skate park being like, eh, that trick's ugly, don't do that. Like Yeah, all those opinions never, that I are kind of like I never even knew what an ugly trick was. I'm like, I didn't know tricks could be ugly. Yeah. My best advice is, yeah, just, uh, especially, I mean, if you're trying to get sponsored in skating, dude, like, everyone is good at skating nowadays, so. Especially here. If I just had a career of me d doing, like, basic tricks that everyone does, like, me especially, because my, if you have, like, a super sick style, that's, like, one thing. Mm. That's, like, 
That's always been my theory. If you want to get noticed, you can go two routes. You can either like keep it simple, but like have like style. some super sick style yeah. that stands out. But that's like almost you, everybody. You, I wouldn't even say that. I'm like you, you kind of have to be born with that. Like you can't like you can't fake stees. Yeah, when you fake stees, it looks worse than bad style. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you either do that or you try to like innovate and do some stuff that no one's really doing and yeah. kind of just. I mean, some people can be stylish with that, but like for the most part, you kind of sacrifice the, the style points when you're trying to, I don't know, look at Rodney Mullen, you know? He's like yeah. invented every trick, but I'm sure he didn't. Give, I didn't think he cared, cared about style. About he was just like, I'm trying to do the most I can kind of it's thing. It's like, dude, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm learning how to dark slide. I hope it, I hope it looks steezy when I, <laughs> when I first do the first one ever. Like, yeah. I doubt he was thinking that. So. Yeah, I don't know. It's really all on the person. It's like, I think you were talking about this in Dan's interview. Like, what do you think is more Style important? Style of skill. Yeah, that was a so question I like, brought up with him. So it's like, you know, it depends on the person. For sure. But yeah, it's my best advice. Just try to just do what you think is cool. And yeah, have fun. Yeah. You want to give a sponsor a shout out to your sponsors or anything? Like, uh... Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Skate for KFD skateboards, uh, footprint shoes, the footprint insoles, uh, independent trucks, Hell yeah. um, FKD bearings, Autobahn wheels, uh, paw grip tape, brand my friend runs, he's super cool, uh, Jay Walker's apparel, uh, Haritos. The, <laughs> Dude, that's dope. The, yeah, the, the, the drink. The soda, they're they're super dope. They're the ones that got me into the X Games, actually. Oh, they're, really? They sponsored it, yeah. That's dope, man. Um, Inner City Skate Shop, and uh, I think that's it. Sick, man. Well, thank you, dude. Thank you for coming out and meeting me today and taking the time and, yeah, chilling and had a rad time having you on, bro. Yeah, no worries, man. I had a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Stay tuned on his channel for his vlogs because the first one was dope, dude. It was funny. Yeah, thanks. It was really I'm glad, interesting. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. So keep an eye on this guy's yeah, channel. Definitely more coming soon. For sure. This is Skate Mates where we talk about skating with our mates. We'll see you in the next episode. All right. Bro. See you later. Whoa.